Morning guys, it's the Tech Prepper. Let's imagine that uh, I'm in Arizona, this box right here, and I have one of my typical antennas with a radiation pattern that looks something like this. Now, what happened is I basically have skipped about two or three states in terms of my ability to communicate. Now, what if I want to be able to communicate within my home state and uh, just a little bit outside of it, something like this. All right, now I'm getting wet, but at least we're communicating with uh, my home state in a regional area. Oh, man. All right. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that demo. Let me get a little bit of coffee here. And uh, we'll get started. So, the reason why I'm doing this video is I've been thinking a lot about emergency communications and a reliable way to communicate locally and regionally. And while VHF, UHF have their place, there are quite a bit of constraints. So I have no problem getting into my local repeater, which is about 15 miles away from me. But if there was a true grid down scenario and the backup power on that tower failed, I pretty much have very limited line of sight. And the area that I'm in is very mountainous, so there's lots of obstructions. So unless I decide to do an hour trek to get to a top of a peak, uh, I'm pretty much out of luck in terms of communications. And I've done a little bit of research. I'm not an expert, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to try to distill this and dummy it down for people like myself that are kind of thick-headed. Uh, so I stumbled on NVIS. NIVIS or uh, Near Vertical Incident Skywave. And basically it's a method where you can deploy an antenna on the lower HF bands, anywhere from two megahertz to 10 megahertz, whereby the radiation pattern, rather than typically uh, skipping all the states in your area, takes off at very high angles, hits the ionosphere and comes straight down. So it works great if there are buildings, mountains and other objects that normally would get in the way of um, line of sight. So uh, I decided in addition to this, I wanted to build myself an antenna, which we'll do later in this video for 40 meters and 80 meters and deploy it in this Nivis configuration and do some single sideband tests. Um, one anecdotal uh, story I wanna share with you guys. I had a viewer send me a email over Winglink email and he basically, uh, I was talking to him about my project, and he had a, um, a friend or somebody who knew who was out in, I believe it was Afghanistan or somewhere in the Middle East, and they were trying to run uh, VHF, UHF, and they were in a pretty bad position to make any type of communication. And uh, apparently the guy just took out his pocket knife, some wire, and ran it up to the Humvee and was able to make a NVIS uh, deployment with the antenna and actually get uh, help and evac. So really cool stuff. And as you can see, we're going to go through a build where you can actually see how simple and inexpensive it is to do this without any tools. Uh, so I started out with uh, doing an 80 meter uh, dipole build. Unfortunately, I didn't capture a whole lot of it on video. I wasn't planning on making a video uh, because I'm not an expert. And uh, once I had it deployed uh, and it took quite a bit of space on my property, um, I decided to do a whisper test and then a, a FTA test just to see what type of propagation. And I'll tell you what, after I did that, I saw contacts very close to my location in that uh, 30 miles to 300 plus uh, range that you would expect with uh, a Nivis deployment. So very happy with that. So uh I was thinking to myself, again, while I'm not the expert and uh, there's a lot of literature out there that I personally found confusing, the next day I decided to make a 40 meter version, which is kind of like the higher portion of the HF band where a Nivis deployment will work. And I had pretty good luck with single sideband and also with um, some digital modes. Uh, I'll try to throw up some pictures here, especially on the FT8 stuff. So that's the purpose of this video. So let's talk about the build. Uh, first of all, what I've done is I've taken a very inexpensive uh, BNC binding post connector and some 26 gauge wire. This is my 80 meter version. So each leg is about 66 feet. 
and uh, it worked great. So for less than $20, I actually have a way to deploy an 80 meter uh, dipole at uh, closer to, to ground level to make it perform like a Nivis antenna. In fact, uh, my deployment is a lot closer to ground level than the literature suggests, but it did work for me. I was pretty much uh, three to five feet off the ground. My new go-to now is this kit. This is the 40 meter build we're gonna go through. And I just have a couple of connectors in this bag because I didn't have the correct BNC connectors, a small uh, carabiner, uh, a little pencil here with duct tape or electrical tape to make sure that I'm able to uh, bind uh, the wire where I need it. Some cordage just in case I need to tie off the ends. And just like the 80 meter version, I am using uh, the BNC binding post. And uh, here's the 33 foot legs. So yeah, let's jump right into it. And again, feel free to correct me anywhere I'm wrong, but for $20, uh, I found this experiment to be fantastic. I learned a lot about uh, NVIS, uh, Nivis, whatever the heck we want to call it. And uh, yeah, let's get right into the build and some experiments. All right, guys, we're back in the shack. We have 33 feet of 26 gauge uh, wire cut. Uh, it may be a little bit longer than that, but they are both uh, of equal length uh, based on how you guys saw me uh, use one uh, full length segment to measure and cut the other one. And I found it very helpful to use a little bit of electrical tape to uh, pin it down so I have an exact measurement. So we'll have to do a little bit of trimming uh, to make this resonant on the portion of the 40 meter band that uh, I'm interested in. Then we have a very simple, very inexpensive uh, BNC with binding post. And the reason why I like this is that uh, with the uh, lower HF bands, uh, our coax cable can be a lot thinner. Uh, the losses aren't as pronounced as in the VHF, UHF portions. And uh, most of my um, RG316 cable works with BNC, so it'll be a very lightweight system. And then for tension relief, it's actually kind of nice. These binding posts have this little hole here. So we're just gonna run the cable through here. We're gonna trim about a couple of inches off here and then run it through this post and then ratchet that down. All right guys, so now we have some tension relief there. We have uh, both of the 26 gauge legs connected to the um, to the binding post. And then what I did last time, it seems to work pretty well. I just put a little bit of electric, electrical tape around the binding post. But again, I don't know if this is gonna make much difference. Uh, maybe a little bit of waterproofing and uh, just a little bit more tension relief. All right, and there we are. Okay, the next thing that I did that I found worked really well, and it was a bit of a MacGyver job, I found these little pieces of plastic that were part of my tent guy system, and then some really inexpensive bungee cord. And all I do now is essentially loop this guy through here, and I use this basically to sit across here so that I can connect like a carabiner so I can clip this on a, um, a mast, for example. All right, so in keeping with the MacGyver build, I have taken a plastic lid from the Cascade pods from our kitchen. All I'm gonna do is essentially cut a couple pieces of plastic here for use as our strain relief at the ends of our antenna wire. And then I'm gonna drill uh, three holes uh, one so that I can clip the carabiner on the ends and then two more so that I can take the strain off of the wire Okay, I did a bit more trimming on the plastic pieces with the scissors Now I'm going to take a 764 drill bit and just drill three holes 
All right, and there we have it. All right, so that was pretty simple to uh, to drill a little piece of plastic. So I have the S-clip carabiners here on the end, and then all we're gonna do is take our wire and put it through the middle hole first, and then we'll put it through the other one. And the reason why I like to do it in this direction is that I can loop the wire on itself and then put some more electrical tape here. So as I'm tuning it, I can change the length and I have a little bit of uh, tension relief as well. Well guys, so that's our very simple dipole. This whole thing cost me less than $20 to build. In fact, I think it's probably closer to $15. And uh, there's the BNC with the binding post. We have 33 feet uh, plus-ish of 26 gauge silicone wire. And then I've also now added a little bit of tension relief and a way to shorten and lengthen uh, the ends uh, just by pulling out as much wire as we need. And then we have S-clip carabiners so that we can use cordage to do the tie downs. So really simple guys. Uh, I'm a new ham and I found that this worked great for 80 meters. So let's go ahead and set everything up and see how this performs for NVIS for the 40 meter band. All right, guys, so uh, don't beat me up too badly, but for a true NVIS configuration, according to the literature, uh, it should be anywhere between a quarter wavelength uh, down to about one-tenth of a wavelength. We're not going to do that. I had good success basically putting a center mast at five feet and then running it down to about three feet on each side. So I'm going to do the same thing uh, for better or for worse. All I know is that it performed on 80 meters, and we'll see if it performs performs correctly on 40. So I've got the uh, Soda Beams Carbon 6 carbon fiber mast. I'm going to erect it all the way up, but I'm just going to put some electrical tape at about that five foot uh, length and attach a carabiner here. We'll clip it and then I have a cheap ground stake. All right guys, so now we have our mast erected with our carabiner and we're just going to clip this on. There we go. And uh, I've got a couple of three foot posts from the garden section and I'm gonna go ahead and run some line down and uh, show you the deployment in a second. Well guys, I gotta tell you, working with 40 meters is so much easier, even though we have property than working with 80 meters. I don't have to go quite as far. Uh, so I'm gonna take this uh, three foot uh, garden stake and just pound it in. And uh, before I do any kind of tuning, we're just gonna go ahead and tie this down and I actually found believe it or not guys the uh, electrical tape works pretty well for keeping this secure at least for temporary uh, deployments like this All right guys, so if I can do this, you can do this. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is go ahead and take some readings on my antenna analyzer. So let's hop in the shack and uh, take a look. All right guys, we're back in the shack. Uh, the first thing I like to do is sweep the range. Uh, I wanna target the 40 meter band, which we've already cut, and I'll sweep in either direction by uh, two megahertz. Okay, so uh, at 1.1 SWR, we're looking at 6.7 megahertz. So we're a little bit long, but uh, this is a really great start. So what we're gonna do is do a little bit of, of trimming. So all I've done is taken off one end and uh, measured out about six inches here. I'm just kind of guessing. And uh, I looped it through the uh, strain relief and then wound the wire on itself and then put a little bit of tape to hold it down. So I'll do the same thing to the other side, bring it in about six inches, and uh, we'll see uh, where we are on the uh, antenna analyzer. All right, so I came in four inches on each side. Let's do one more sweep. And uh, I'm gonna call that good enough for right now. We're at 1.13 SWR at 7.16 megahertz. And at 7.2 megahertz, which is the bottom portion of the 40 meter band, we're at a 1.3 SWR. 
We're back in the shack. Moment of truth here. Uh, we're looking for check ins in the meantime. Anybody, anywhere, any call, do it on net. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November. The November Tango 1, come on in. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November. Yeah, QSL, QSL. Thank you very much. Okay, uh... I'm about 11 miles south of George, uh, right next to the Arizona border here. And I'm running a 5-foot magnetic loop that's about 30 inches off the ground. Name here is Alan. Alpha Lima. Alpha November. And I'm located 30 miles, 35 miles north of Salt Lake. Hey there, Sam. So I copy Kilo Juliet 7 Alpha X-Ray Quebec. I am Kilo Tango 1 Romeo Uniform November QSL. Very good. Um, yeah, uh, depending on, uh, I guess, the band conditions, but it's, it's Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, those demos. Again, uh, I'm not an expert, but I just wanted to share with you my experience. That that's what this channel is all about. I never claim to be the expert, but uh, I do try my hardest to experiment and uh, step through things as best I can and uh, really work with the area that I'm in, the equipment I have, the skills I have, and I'm being successful. So feel free to rip me apart in the comments, but uh, uh, this stuff is working. Uh, I, I'm really surprised how well almost no investment in this little antenna kit uh, is working and even at suboptimal uh, deployment levels. Well, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.